but there's there's this uh, uh, need for people to encounter God. Mm-hmm. But once you've encountered God, you need to be able to transition from an encounter to a more meaningful lifestyle. There needs to be something stronger that holds yeah. you mm. and yeah. that helps you transition out of a culture of what the world's culture is offering you mm. into a spiritual culture. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Winning Conversations, an early Christmas present, some would say. Yes. This is coming out, and this is an amazing Christmas present because we have Pastor John Ben Dixon. How are you, sir? I'm great. Oh, my Glad gosh. to be with you before Christmas. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. It's Christmas wonderful. news came early, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, you are, I, I'm, <clears throat> so again, we were talking earlier about why this podcast exists. and. Yeah. And the conversations and why it's called winning conversations because you get to have these amazing opportunities and you're one of these people for me yeah personally same I, I, same like just, i'm honored to be able to sit here and talk to you this is not a normal conversation we get to have it's unreal yeah. it's really is one of those moments where like you like you get to talk to a, a titan in the faith for sure and i absolutely consider you that like someone who's yes. just ha ah, and i'm sorry Top dog. Well, we could, I could, I could gush for a long time, but I don't want to because this is not about. I so for those of you who don't know, for people like right. who just aren't aware, could you please explain like your relationship with Heritage of Faith, if you don't yes. mind? Heritage of Faith uh, really started in my time when I, I was already part of Jerry Savelle Ministries in South Africa, um, and uh, as part of Heritage of Faith minis- uh, Jerry Savelle Ministries in South Africa. I was connecting with a lot of pastors. A pastor came to, to me. He had a heart condition and needed someone to run his church. And so uh, Brother Jerry said, go ahead, run, run the church. We didn't uh, take any finances for it. And he ended up never coming back into the church because his heart uh, failed him and he mm-hmm. ended up dying. Mm-hmm. But uh, that led us to actually take over the church. The people asked us to take over the church. And so from the beginning, it was actually a Jerry Savelle a, a Heritage of Faith Church, and that goes back more than 20 years. Now we started at the same time pretty much as Heritage of Faith uh, Crowley. Yeah. Mm. And um, so I was first part of JSMI uh, in South Africa and then became Heritage of Faith and started a church in, in South Africa. And that church has expanded to be a number of campuses um, to many Bible schools, and it's just uh, done many things in South Africa. That's a, and so people might not know, how long have you been connected with Dr. Savelle? Has it been? Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, one-on-one, personally, being part of his ministry, being part of his life is a, close to 28 years now. Golly, and, that's uh, wild. And it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's It's been a great journey, you know, uh, Dr. Savelle is one of those uh, rare people that have uh, integrity, they have honor, he has honor. He is uh, a man of great capacity for people, for ministries, for pastors. And it's been my honor to be with him, walk with him, serve him, and him to be part of my life and my ministry and and all of the things that we do together. It's been 28 years of just absolute joy. (laughs) You know, uh, uh, if I if I can just keep talking here for a minute, mm-hmm. please do. The way that the Lord brought uh, Brother Jerry and I together was a supernatural encounter, because uh, I was serving my pastor in South Africa, and Brother Jerry came to do a conference for him. And when I heard he was coming to do the conference, the Lord spoke to me and said, "You must serve him, drive him around." So I phoned my pastor and I said, "Can." I'd never done this before, and at that time I'd been in the church 12 or 13 years. I was a senior uh, minister already in the church at that time, and I'd never asked him for that. And He said, yes, John, of course you can do that, and I ended up driving Brother Jerry for a week, and um, uh, that was the beginning of a connection with him. Brother Copeland came and did an International Believers Conference later on in that year in South Africa, and Brother Jerry and I reconnected. And the Lord, it was so strong inside of me that the night 
we were serving Brother Copeland and, and uh, Miss Gloria. And of course, Brother Jerry was there. But our job was to serve uh, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland mm -hmm. on that conference. And uh, I said to my wife, we were lying in a, ho a hotel room, and uh, I said, this is the closest I think a woman can be, I, I, as a man, that I can feel like a woman is when she's pregnant. When that, <laughs> yeah, when that baby's <laughs> about to give birth, if you don't give birth, it's like you're going to die because yeah. this is this got to it's got to come now. This baby's coming. It's coming. You can't stop it, you know. And the Lord, it was so strong on me that I had to connect with Brother Jerry. What an interesting way to look at it. That's so interesting. It, those were my words that yeah, I said to her. I said, wild. I feel like if I don't give birth to this relationship now, mm. that it's it's like something will die in me, you know. Wow. The next day. She said, what are you going to say to him? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The next day I went to him and I said, Brother Jerry, I feel like our lives are connected. And he asked me one question, USA or South Africa? I said, well, if the Lord wants me to go to USA, I will, but I'm actually called to South Africa. And then he called everybody in the, in the minister's room, in the green room. To in that same right moment? In that moment, right in that moment, to witness the divine connection between him and I. And uh, that was in November of 1996. That oh is incredible. Gosh. And been going ever since. Yeah, that see? is incredible. Those Urgency God docs. and boldness. So yeah. you had to go make your take your shot. Yeah. Could you imagine if you didn't do that? Like that. I don't. No. I mean, it's like if you had to, had to you do had it. to do I it. Had to do it. And next, it took us about a year because of just legal processes and all that other stuff. And I was very senior in the corporate world at that time, and um, it took us about a year for us to transition into the ministry. And 30 years later. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Like, is that like baffling to think about? Like, just like when you think about what you, like the 30 years of what that's looked like, what you've done. Yeah. I mean, the schools, the what ministry, you've built. like what you, wow. it's, un, it's a, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's not even close to stopping. <laughs> no, no, we're just getting started. That's what I'm saying. It's not like, yeah. you're like oh, you know, the greener pasture is about ready to hang it up. Like, uh, no, right. you're still going incredibly strong, which yeah. is yeah. the fact that you're here with us right now is just right. an amazing opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and right. there's, you know, there's another part to the story I'd like to tell the, the listeners mm -hmm. is uh, my dad was uh, dedicated to the Lord by Smith Wigglesworth. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, my, my dad's grandmother held the first meetings for John G. Lake in her home in South Africa. <laughs> what? When my dad was 19 years old, he went to a the the, the first um, crusade that Dr. Or Oral Roberts had in South Africa, which was 1954 or 1955, and he had just been given an inheritance by his by his grandmother, and he he sowed half of his inheritance into that crusade with Oral Roberts mm. in South Africa. Forty years later, exactly, exactly forty years later from that crusade, God brought me to Jerry Savell. The end of the end of Jerry Savell's life, uh, in the end of my dad's life, he was working with me and brother Jerry in JSMR. Mm. So, if you take the full course of that seed that was sown, the faith seed from Smith Wigglesworth. My great grandmother's seed of having John G. Lake's ministry in her home, to Oral Roberts, to Kenneth Copeland, to Jerry Savell, to me. That whole cycle, if you talk about divine connections and you talk about a seed that never ever stops working for you, mm. I'm here as a product of seeds that were sown yeah. so way back. For me to ever say this is about my ministry or it's about my my stuff, that would just be crazy because <laughs> sure. so many people have pray, paid the price. Yeah. And so the other side of it is for me to take a relationship that God obviously orchestrated and ordained from so far back mm -hmm. in this faith legacy, to take it lightly would be silly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to say, well, this is only until it meets my needs and, and you know, if there's any... Uh, thing that I don't agree with, I must now leave the ministry or leave Brother Jerry or leave anything for a disagreement. Yeah. Mm. 
it's wake up, John. <laughs> this is a bigger picture. <laughs> it is. That's that's you know? that's heritage. That's, that's legacy. Heritage. That's exactly. amazing. Oh, yeah. I guess that's a great question, though, because, I mean, we, the name of our church is Heritage of yeah. Faith. Yeah. Right. You know, and you can almost kind of skip past it when you're thinking about it. Yeah. About that word, like the Heritage, heritage. of Faith. Heritage. You kind of land on the faith. Yes. Right. You know, you, you, you get to the faith part, yeah. but it is a heritage. Yeah. It is. And that is a significant word right. when it comes to ministry. It's yeah. a significant term. And I kind of feel like you're walking that out yes. with, yeah. Yeah. you know, like heritage, legacy. I mean, there's a million words that you could use, right? Well, not a million. I'll say two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do you think about that when it comes to like the legacy and the heritage I of do. what you're doing? It's actually, it's it's a big component of our, our church in South Africa. It's a big component of our people that we we do think about the fact that there is a legacy. We do think about the importance of having a uh, a bigger purpose in life, uh, an assignment. Uh, other ministers that have gone before that I've learned from have, have made statements like this. You're not assigned to a organization. You are, your assignment is always to a person or to a people. Mm. And uh, that has always been something that I've, uh, that I've held as, as a strong uh, part of what I do. Is I'm called, I'm assigned to a person and I'm signed to a people. So I can't be assigned to the whole world. Yeah. There are other people that are assigned to do different things around the world. Yeah. But I am assigned, my assignment is to walk with Brother Jerry, to cooperate with him, partner with him, to do it as, as long as God says. And as far as I know, God doesn't change his mind about such, such uh, incredible lifetime, beyond my lifetime early on, yeah. from Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, you know, Oral Roberts, that's, Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle. Yeah. How do I? How does God change His mind about my assignment? No, <laughs> I mean, no. you know, as pastor illiterate as I am, yeah. I know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't know Smith Wigglesworth yeah. or John, right. like, like these names are, I mean, titans of titans. Names. Like they yeah. are the shoulders that we're all standing on. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that that's coming straight through. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Like yeah. amazing crazy. Not. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's. Yeah. Oh. I have so many questions. So you're you and your wife, how what is how does she fit into your ministry? What is she yes. how did yeah, how Thank does she you. fit into everything? Yeah. So her her father was a pastor in the AFM church, which was the founding church of John G. Lake. Mm -hmm. So John G. Lake's churches that he started in South Africa was Apostolic Faith Mission AFM. He was a pastor. So she's in the familiar AFM with church. this too. So she's completely yeah. familiar with this legacy. Good soil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, That's good amazing. Soil. Yeah. And uh, and we met each other. Um, uh, I've been married to her 43 years. Mm. And uh, we've, we've uh, by the grace of God, we've journeyed together in this amazing legacy, in this amazing time together. And I, I'm grateful to God for her. She's my friend, she's mm. my partner. She's um, she's been my marriage partner for all these years, and uh, it's been a grand, grand journey <laughs> to have her by my side. She's called with me in the ministry as I'm away traveling here in the U.S. She's busy preaching and running the ministry in South Africa while I'm away. So our journey is. Is, is continues, and uh, my I've got two sons, uh, natural born sons. Mm. Uh, my eldest son is Bryn, my youngest son is Garth, and they're both with me in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, family business. It's it's God's <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah, and we're family, all family affair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what's like? So last time you you spoke here yes. at Heritage, you'd mentioned a, a good chunk about. The, the value of that relationship with you and your right. wife and how that's had a just such an impact on the things you do. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think our leadership at this house specifically, like there are a lot of great marriages and sometimes you don't, you don't always get that. Right. <laughs> 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 so as a, as a, as a, as a younger married couple, it's, it's amazing to look at someone like yourself who's got that track record. And like, so, I mean, how does that go about? Like that doesn't just happen. You don't just yeah. have a good marriage. Yeah. You fight tooth and nail for it. What is that like? Well, the foundation of 
every good marriage is the word of god mm. and i know that sounds like an easy answer but knowing the word of god and doing the word of god in marriage is a choice yeah. and it's a commitment and um my you know the lord clearly spoke to me when i got married because i i said to the lord i don't just want to have a marriage my mom and dad didn't have such a great marriage it ended uh, my mom died early in her life and my dad got remarried and had a, a better marriage after my mom died than 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 i saw him having with my mother mm. um uh and i i saw so much carnage in pastors marriages and marriages in general mm-hmm. so my cry before the lord was i want to have a marriage that is that is joyful it's fruitful it's satisfying it's not just two people living together because they've got kids and they've got responsibilities yeah. together you know i wanted to have a marriage that was meaningful joyful satisfying all the days of my life at every level mm-hmm. and uh well he took me to the book of ephesians he said if you want to if you want to have a good marriage John then you've got to do what Paul said I do to the church and you've got to give yourself up for your wife mm. so he, of course he's talking to me as a man and I have to bring that perspective to this conversation mm-hmm. because I was seeking God and this is how God spoke to me you got to give yourself up for your wife that's Uh, an easy thing to hear it's not such an easy thing to, <laughs> to do. do what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because there are so many small decisions like when we got first got married i was uh, i was quite active in sports and i was either in church or i was i was playing sport it was sort of where my life was after i came out of the military and uh well when she when we got married she said to me john i didn't marry you to sit on the sidelines and watch you play sport. I married you because I want to be connected to you. I want to build our intimacy together, mm-hmm. our, our our relationship. And so she said I want you to stop playing sport. I said but you knew I was a, a fairly good sportsman at it playing at a fairly high level of sport mm-hmm. before we got married, you know. She said I know, but what's our marriage going to be like if you are playing sport and I'm doing something else while you're playing sport? How do we yeah. build this marriage? Mm. So I went before the Lord and he said I told you John give up your life <laughs> for your wife. So I quit sport. Mm. It's a sacrifice. So then I started watching sport on television. <laughs> 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 I'm laughing at you. <laughs> oh so then uh, that lasted a couple of months and then she said so we were early young married couple and she said John I didn't uh, I didn't ask you to give up sport so you could then you know watch it in the living room so i said well what do you want to do she said i think we should get rid of the tv completely and have no television in our house <coughs> first of all <laughs> okay uh, so <laughs> so i thought well you know went back to the lord i said lord what do i do he said i told you to give up your life for your wife i said well, i'm doing all the giving yeah she's Come not on. doing anything you know he said well that wasn't what i said to you if you want what if you want the marriage you want and you got to do what mm. i tell you to do and uh so we got rid of the TV. Okay. This is a great lesson. Oh, you're loving this. <laughs> this is a great <laughs> you're lesson. Yeah, this. I am. All the guys this. are like, "Oh, s- I, I <laughs> my podcast I'm cut out, out right now. <laughs> the static in this thing is crazy. I keep yeah. missing that one part." Yeah. Oh my and god. And I I realize I realize that what I'm sharing, you know, is is challenging for people to hear. Yeah. But it is the standard that God asked me to live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and I can tell you that um those those things were the f- the building block because she began to realize that there is nothing more important to me in my life than obeying God yeah mm-hmm. and loving her yeah. when she began to realize that it took a few years but when she began to realize that and our children came along and and I was totally committed to keep on building this without having a TV in the home <laughs> without playing sport totally just you know doing everything that I could do to make it as great as it could be God's anointing came on it his blessing came on our choices mm. and so all of the challenges that you have in personality conflicts and we had those yeah 
you know, differences of opinions, clashes of will, you know, I want to do this and you want to do that. Suddenly there's an anointing and a grace because you've been obedient to God in the big issues. Yeah. Mm. You know, and one of the other things that he said is, John, at all costs, keep strife out of your marriage. And so what that meant is that when we got into heated arguments, I would step away from the argument and say, Sharon, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. And she would get more angry with oh, me yeah. because I was stepping away and I wasn't engaging in that. this thing. Mm-hmm. You know? I get that for <laughs> sure, yeah. And I, and I said, but, but I have to obey God and not let strife into our marriage. Sure. Because the Bible says where strife is, all manner of evil abounds. Mm-hmm. And so this was so big. I don't want evil in my marriage. I don't want evil in my marriage. And uh, again, it's easy, it's easy to say that. Yeah. And it's more difficult. And I didn't get it right all the time. She didn't get it right all the time. Mm-hmm. But we were significantly engaged enough for, to make it work. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to just bring this back to the ministry. I can say that I love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do. I love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because I love my wife. Mm. And that was what initially is what he said to me. He says, if you, he said, if you want to learn to be a pastor that really is a shepherd, that knows how to love the church, you need to know how to love your wife. The way I love the church is the way that you will love your wife. Yeah. So as I journeyed through that process in my life, I began to appreciate what Paul was saying to the Ephesian church, if you lay down your life like Christ laid down his life for the church, then you will get an understanding of the power of the church, the love for the church, the joy of the church, because you see it in your marriage. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's amazing. <laughs> What's it like with your sons? Because, uh, again, I'm, sometimes you see kids get into ministry that maybe shouldn't yes. and sometimes you see anointed children that are just like right. that's there's a fire there that right. needs to be cultured and, and move forward and, and so yeah. what's that like serving with your serving the lord with your sons my sons uh, like many of the ministers i know the, the enemy certainly comes after the legacy seed mm-hmm. and the devil certainly came after my two sons and they both had a journey in the early years of their life from teenage years into their early young adult lives where they, the world called them yeah. and the world pulled them. But they were always assured of one thing, and that was we were always going to love them and we were never going to judge them. And whatever they did wrong, we weren't going to uh, allow their choices to separate them from us. So they were always assured of that. And they made wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And they both uh, had to journey in their own walk with God to come back to him and come and repent before him. And when they did that, then um, they encountered the God that was the God of grace, the God of forgiveness, the God of greatness, you know, Mm -hmm. favor and grace. And so now we, we are in a place where... They are meaningful contributors to the ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have confidence not just in them. We have a, a really amazing team of young people in our ministry that are, um, I, I want to say, late 20s, early 30s. And the Lord has, and a lot of them have grown up in the church with me and with us. And uh, they have seen this whole legacy unfold and been part of it. Mm. So, you know, I delegate a lot of what happens in the ministry to a younger generation of people. Mm. And uh, it's a grand thing to have. I want to hear about that program. What it, Can you remind us what that yeah. program's called that y'all have? So our program is called My Exchange. My Exchange. My Exchange, and it was birthed out of... Um, uh, a recognition, and based on our conversation we've been having till now, you can understand that I had an encounter with God where I had to exchange my desire mm-hmm. for what he said I needed to do. Yeah. Yep. So my exchange wasn't just born as a, as a word, although the word is a great word. Mm-hmm. It was born out of the fact that I knew that I needed to have a meaningful exchange 
of my desire for what God desired for me yeah. and what fruit that brought. So when the younger generation of people started coming into the ministry and we needed to have a way of, of giving them a meaningful understanding of what a great life they can have, mm-hmm. but they have to do an exchange. Yep. And so it has to be my exchange. And so if it's my exchange, then it's not someone else that's exchanging on my behalf. It's my exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what kind of things do they participate in? Yeah. Like what kind of training do they go through? Our, our, our primary focus right at the beginning is, is we lead them in a path of giving them some teaching about purpose, mm-hmm. about how they can plan things in their lives around purpose rather than just planning things around, I have a, uh, I think I want to do this, I think I want to do that, yeah. or, you know, I can pursue this, I'm talented enough to pursue that. Mm-hmm. So what's your purpose? What is it that you really want to do? In, you know, what is God's plan exactly, for you? Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, <coughs> a good thing or a God thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think that's just like, that. Pro- it's the coolest thing. Yeah. Like training up the next generation, it's so crucial to the body and it's so crucial to the church and, I wish there was more of a focus on that, right. like really leading and really imparting and like being intentional yes. and bringing up this next generation. And there's a part of that. I think as we see a lot in the younger generation, there's that microwave mentality of like, I want that ministry now, that yes. anointing now, whatever that is, but this is a crock pot solution. Like you've got to walk it out yeah. over time. Yeah. And I, as someone who was a lost prodigal in himself, like hearing what's happened with your son's journey is amazing because now they can speak to people from a level that they couldn't, they yeah. do. you know, they yeah. have access to tap into something that like, you know, we've, we've, we've been pulled by the world yeah. right? and we, we got hit. Being punched. a PK is hard. It's right. rough. It's hard. Right. It's rough. <laughs> right. But the journey back is that that's the, the, the joy of it. Yeah. And then what that looks like, there is redemption. There right. is mercy. There is grace. There is forgiveness. But I feel like this, I feel like the younger generations too, and even, I mean, us, my generation, I'm one of them. Like they're so hungry mm-hmm. for something. You know what I mean? They are, they crave purpose and they crave mm-hmm. life and it's just about leading them and putting them in the in the position that they're supposed to be in. Yes. Um, but how will they know if they don't get led? Well, speak. How would so if someone was like, "I love what you're saying, and I want to get involved with right. the My Exchange," how would they go about doing that? Well, you can go onto the My Exchange website. We will link all those. <laughs> yeah. We will link all those show yes. notes because yeah. I want to make sure people have this yeah. readily available. Yeah. Is it only in Af- South Africa, or is it at the moment? It's only in South Africa. So you get at to the travel. At the moment. So at you get moment. to travel. At the moment. <laughs> right. International yeah. travel guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> but as of right now, it's just there. It's just but there. But who knows what God can do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've had a lot of uh, pastors, a lot of ministers who have asked me the question: How can we have this in our mm. ministry? Mm-hmm. How can we sure. have this? And so we're, you know, we're actively seeking God and and uh, looking for ways that we can bring some of what we have to other ministries yeah. around the world and, and and activate that in other churches and other ministries. So yeah. it's certainly something that uh, I believe God wants to do because if we don't have a solution for young people, uh, if I'm talking too much, just ask me a no, question and jump in here. But but there's there's this uh, uh, need for people to encounter God. Mm -hmm. But once you've encountered God, you need to be able to transition from an encounter to a more meaningful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if you're connected to a a group of people in the world, the, the, the chances of you staying in that encounter with God diminishes day by day. There needs to be something stronger that holds yeah. you mm. and yeah. that helps you transition out of a culture of what the world's culture is offering you mm-hmm. into a spiritual culture. Mm. And uh, that's certainly something that we've worked very hard on to do that. So it's a grand thing to encounter the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to sound... Uh, 
in any way diminishing this because this is important, but it's great to fall in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's great to laugh by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once you get up off of that floor and you go tomorrow and the next day and the next day, there's something that's got to hold you. It's good. It's got to hold you. It's got to keep you and you've got to stay in that. And so then you have to be found, uh, you know, st have a strong foundation that can help you grow. And, uh, and uh, so we're working on that actively to, to – and our younger generation of people in South Africa, they – have made such an impact in their parents' life mm -hmm. because it wasn't just a one-time encounter. It's been a lifestyle that they've lived and their parents have watched the change Getting and they've passed. watched them give up, minister to their friends. And some of their friends have said, we don't want anything to do with what you got. <laughs> some of their friends have said, how can we get yeah, what you got? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I then, want some of that. And so, yeah, so that some have come in, some have drifted and, and parents have watched their life change. And lo and behold, Parents have been said, wow, if my kids can do this, mm. I can yeah, do this. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and it's had a big change. Well, it sounds like you are making winners in life. That's what it sounds like. Did you like wow. that transition? Did you like that? That was yeah. an award-winning transition yeah. right there. Thank you. That was unbelievable. Yeah. It sounds like you're making winners in life. And so that leads us to our last question um, that we ask on every podcast, and we love hearing everybody's answers because they're always so unique and they're all great. What does making a winner in life mean to you? It's going to sound obvious when I say <laughs> this, but exchange. Yeah. Exchange mm. for God's plan for your life. Mm. If you exchange and say, I'm willing to, to say, what do you want for me, Lord? Rather than, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to, what do you want for me, Lord? He will make you a winner, a winner. in life. <sighs> See? So great. This is the best <laughs> show. I don't know. I, you know what I mean? Like, hands down. We I have know. The, we have the best gig in the yeah. entire church. It's besides true. The, like, it you is know, so oh my true. gosh. It's amazing. Yeah. I, this has been an absolute joy Thank and you. treat and Thank a blessing. And I can't wait to see the people that get to watch this and listen to this. This is going to be yeah. a blessing for all of us. So yes. thank, thank you, you so much, much for your time. Yes, thank, thank you. you. It's been awesome. <sighs> Hello there. <laughs> um, <laughs> we want to say again, thank you so much for another episode of Winning Conversations. This is, again, the best Christmas yeah. treat we could possibly give you. Um, we can't wait to see you on the next episode of Winning Conversations. Check us out on the Instagram, YouTube, podcast, all those places. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Okay. <laughs>